Hey, I'm Seth with Land the House. I'm here at my off-grid tool shed. I reached out to Ampeak and they sent me their 1000 watt power inverter and I thought I would unbox this and hook it up. There is an issue I was having in the shed. Whenever I turn on my current inverter, the cooling fans run all the time. But with the Ampeak, it's got the temperature controlled fan here. I believe it's 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So we will go ahead and plug this up and see if it is quiet in use under normal conditions here in the tool shed. Disclaimer, I'm not a professional, I'm just a homeowner that built an off-grid shed. So be sure to contact a professional before you do this kind of work. Super quick unboxing here. So it's got your black and red wires, plus it's got this little wrench, which is handy. It's packaged in some foam. And then also in this plastic wrap. It has mounting screw holes here on both sides. On the back, it's got these really cool plastic protectors. So you can put your uh, cables in here and it will separate them and you won't be touching any of that, which is nice. On this side, it's got your uh, two AC uh, receptacles here and then a five volt USB here. It's got fault, power, and then on off switch right there. Backside, just a uh, little information. And then uh, cooling fans back here on the back. Let's step into my newly constructed tool shed and I'll show you what the power setup looks like currently. Things will be changed, I'm sure, in the future, but Midnight Solar Classic has got a little over 500 watts coming in. I've got this on off breaker, on off switch, and here's my little inverter currently. And so whenever you flip the on switch, which is here, it's got that uh, fan going all the time. So we're gonna replace this with the new Ampeak and see how well it operates. It's a bit dark in here because the power inverter is not connected. So I'm gonna use the uh, supplied 13 millimeter wrench here to loosen up my wiring on the battery. And we just pull that cable off here. I've got the solar power disconnected from uh, outside. So what I want to pull this off for is to be able to attach my cable from the um, Ampeak here. And they've got this uh, wire and it's actually two different wires strung together. I had not seen that before, but anyway, just gonna use that same nut there to connect my power inverter. Let's see, while that's off, I think I'm gonna pull this other side as well, and we'll be able to use that. Now this one, I can just uh, unscrew the bolt, not pull it all the way off the terminal. Okay, use that wrench, get it as tight as I can here. It is nice that they have supplied this little tiny wrench. I'll probably keep this out here with the power system here. All right, that seems nice and snug. Let's go ahead and do the same over here on this one. Now it's time to get the Ampeak inverter itself installed. My plug is here on the side, and I wanna make sure that that will go into this. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just plug it up. Yeah, and that way I can kind of judge where this will fit. And I think right about here is gonna be good. As long as I can still access the back over here, I should be all right. So I'm gonna use some little Torx head screws to get this installed. I don't anticipate that it's gonna take much to hold this in place, so I may just do the two screws here. Yeah, that's more than enough to hold that in. Okay, so that's installed nicely. The next step is to come over here to this side and get the actual cables in. All right, my fat finger is gonna be in your way here, but I'm gonna unscrew the back of this cover. Yeah, not a lot of room left in here. Um, so yeah, this right here is just a little plastic cover that unscrews. It's not 100% necessary, but it is nice to have to prevent this from touching anything else. So 
I'm going to unscrew that nut, get that locking washer off of there, and let's see, let's go ahead and plug this up right here, put that locking washer back on, put the nut back on, okay, find our wrench. Tighten this down. Okay, maybe a couple more turns. Get that on there nice and tight. Very cool. And now I'm gonna replace this on here. Basically just keeps anybody from touching that wire. And now I'm gonna do the same with the black over here. I turned off the inverter just to make sure it doesn't try to power on whenever I am unscrewing this here. I'm going to replace that black plastic cap on this one. And there we go. That's the full installation of the Ampeak 1000 watt inverter. Basically just uh, had to connect the black and red wires here to the inverter and then go down here to the battery. So let's go ahead and turn back on the battery to the Classic and we'll get that going. Now I've got the Classic has the auxiliary port going over here to this solid state relay. And when that turns on, that means that my electrical here in the building has power. So we are good with that. Looks like we're running the battery at uh, 13 volts right there. Go ahead and flip this. Let's see what it says here. All right, now we got uh, 70 watts coming in. All right, let's go ahead and turn this on, see what happens. I saw the green light flip on back over here, so it has got power to it. Listen to this. No noise whatsoever from any of this. All right, let's go over here and flip on a switch. We have got power. Still totally silent. Have 60 watts coming in from the panels. It's uh, basically, it's uh, New Year's Day, so there is uh, not a lot of sun out today. Very cool. I don't hear anything at all coming from any of this, so perfect. These two together are only 20 watts, and I've got a 30 watt here, so Let's plug that up and have 50 watts being pulled from that battery. I don't anticipate anything. 70 watts coming in, totally quiet. I like that a lot. As you can tell, the Ampeak 1000 watt power inverter is easy to install and it is working flawlessly so far on the first run. I don't anticipate having anything more than about 300 watts being drawn here in the tool shed. I may hook up some battery maintainers, I'll have some studio lights in here, and then a couple more overhead lights, but so far it is working flawlessly with 50 watts being pulled through it. I know it's a long ways from the 1000 that it's ready for, but the main thing I wanted was to be able to pull power from an inverter and not get close to its maximum. That way the cooling fans would not turn on during normal use. And I think we have achieved that here with the Ampeak. Let's see how well the inverter works with a bit of a load on it. So we've got 50 watts worth of lights going and this small router pulls 650 watts. So we're looking at 700 watts total. Go ahead and plug this up here. And we will see uh, how well it runs this and if it uh, dims the lights any whenever it kicks on. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we get here. <laughs> I 
it ran that just fine. It did uh, kick the lights just a little bit, uh, but it was hardly noticeable. So that works out well. I'm gonna be using that router out here in the tool shed to fix uh, my uh, hinges need to be a little bit deeper on my doors. And so I will run this for a bit longer and I can just, uh, in my update on the inverter, tell you how well that uh, happens. But anyway, uh, that ran no problem. Still quiet, no noises, no nothing. So uh, it's all good. I spoke with a friend of mine who does solar and hydro for a living, and he said there should be uh, no reason to turn off the inverter whenever not in use. So I'm gonna try leaving it on and see if it drains the batteries overnight. I think I read somewhere that this thing uses between one and two watts just to be connected. So uh, we shouldn't have any problem with that. Here's the booklet that comes with this unit. It's got a maximum continuous power of 1,000 watts, a surge power of 2,000 watts, it is a modified sine wave. The DC rated input voltage is 12.5 volts. The DC rated input voltage range is 11 to 15. So you can use a battery that's uh, 12 volt basically. AC rated output 100 volts to 110 volts. And frequency is 60 hertz. It has a low battery shutdown of 9.6 to 10.5 volts. And it resumes at 11.5 to 11.9. If you want to purchase one of these, I have a link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link, so I'll get a very tiny percentage off of that sale. Um, but so far it's working well. I will update you if things change here in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I anticipate using the tool shed here in the future to do a lot of filming, and it's going to be so nice to have power available out here for use. All right, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.